that he wanted to give you everlasting life that can only be obtained by believing he is who he said he is. By believing that he did what everyone knows he did. He died to save you. He rose again from the dead, conquering death, conquering sin, conquering the flesh, conquering this world, conquering Satan himself. Muhammad couldn't do that. Islam can't do that for you. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father but by me. John 14, 6. If you claim you love him, why don't you believe the words he said? In John 3, 18, he said, If you don't believe the only begotten Son of God, you're condemned already. It's time to believe. It's called faith, people. It's called faith. Interesting story out of Israel National News. Report said ISIS head killed in bombing. A U.S.-led coalition reportedly dropped a bomb that killed Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, the self-named caliphate. He's dead? Is there proof? Do we know for sure? I guess we'll find out in a few days. U.S. report says we got it. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. Hmm. Don't get too excited because when one falls, there's 500 million ready to step up. Okay. <laughs> so don't get overly excited. And understandably so, Christians don't celebrate the death of anyone. It's sad to see someone die without knowing Christ. Out of virtual Jerusalem, Donald Trump says Obama seems to support Muslims more than Israel. Well, duh, Donald. Not even going to read the story. It's quite obvious to anyone that can see. I've got friends that are so blindly supportive of Barack Obama, they think he's the greatest president ever, and it just boggles my mind. I'm thinking, how blind are you? How idiotic is your thought process if you think Obama's been anything good to America. He's the most racist president we've ever had. He's the most hateful toward Israel that we've ever had. The economy has tanked under him. The government is forcing people to buy something, which goes against the Constitution. Hello? Just amazing. Here's some interesting news out of Ynet News. Israel named the head of UN body for the first time ever. An Israeli ambassador to the UN will head a UN committee for the first time since joining the organization in 1949. Danny Danan was elected after a diplomatic campaign including opposition by Muslim member states. Danny Danan elected to head the UN legal committee. Very interesting. You know, we know that what Satan uses for evil, that God can use for good. Um, Romans 8, you know this. Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purposes. After seeing this Orlando tragedy, they're, they're trying to figure out how this... Mateen fella got so radicalized to the point of hatred and killing so many. An important part of that investigation is the Internet. Criminology professor Scott Decker says the Internet has played a very central role in the spread of terrorism, particularly people in the United States who have become radicalized or have adopted extremist views. The Internet's a game changer in today's terrorism, especially for lone wolf terrorists like Mateen. ISIS is showing that they're incredibly savvy using social media and the internet to spread their ideology to recruit uh, soldiers, uh, to call for violent attacks against Americans, against Jews, against Christians, against gays. Hmm. Abu Muhammad al Adnani is a director of external operations for ISIS. 
Right now, he's at the top of America's most wanted list. Um, he helped inspire the massacre in San Bernardino a few months ago. He issued the call for violence during Ramadan that apparently inspired Mateen to massacre 50 people in Orlando. Hmm. There is good news in all this. The Islamic State is in a state of crisis right now. They're losing ground in three areas. The northern Aleppo province, Raqqa. They're sustaining blows to their money, to their fighters, to their weapons, to their supplies. Libyan forces are advancing on Islamic State strongholds. But you know what's even better? The Holy Spirit is using the internet against ISIS and using it for the glory of God. I love that I'm able to use this form of media to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. All over the world. I mean, I, I haven't looked lately, but there was a time a few years ago where I looked into the background of some of the people that subscribe to my YouTube channel and understand something. I, I'm not doing this ministry to gain subscribers or followers or friends or any of that stuff. I, I'm doing this out of love for my Lord and Savior, the one who saved me. I, I'm doing this to tell the world about my great God and Savior. I do this to strengthen the body of Christ and to lead the lost to the cross of Christ. I do it out of serving my Lord. I love, though, that I've seen that there's people from all walks of life that watch these videos, that hear the good news of the gospel, that hear that Jesus is the only way to God the Father. I hear from people in strange places. I didn't know that Iran and North Korea allowed things like this to come into their countries, but I have heard from people in those countries applauding me for what I do. And I think it's the most important work anyone can do. I mean, we, we have all these cyber missionaries, all these online pastors and preachers. Yes, granted, some of them are, are misinformed. Some of them are false teachers, false prophets. But there's a lot of them that aren't. There's a lot of people that are genuinely committed to serving the Lord and serving others and teaching and preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're reaching people in countries that missionaries aren't even allowed to go to any longer. Okay? Online missionaries are going into Europe and secular nations like Japan and Iran and North Korea. They're reaching Muslims around the world. They're reaching atheists around the world. There's one called Global Media Outreach. It shared the gospel more than 1.5 billion times. And if you go to their website, they say they've registered more than 167 million decisions for Christ in the last 12 years alone. <laughs> 167 million decisions for Christ in 12 years. The Holy Spirit is using global media outreach. They're, the Holy Spirit is using the internet. He's using Facebook. He's using Twitter. He's using YouTube to take the gospel across the internet into the hearts and souls of those around the world seeking the truth of God. God's word is being proclaimed throughout the world. You know, Jesus said... In Matthew 24, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. By the gospel going forth all over the world, currently it's doing that. We should always pray and not lose heart, like Luke 18, 1 tells us. You know, a pastor once told me, Daryl, you might be the only Bible some people ever read. 
And that really stuck with me. That really stuck with me. We could be the next Bible. An atheist, a Muslim, a Jew, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Scientologist might meet. We're going to be the spiritual internet for someone today. Hmm. Let's go to Luke 6. In Luke 6, starting in verse 27, this is Jesus talking. He said, But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. In Luke 6, in chapter, in verse 22, Jesus said, Blessed are you when men shall hate you, when they shall separate you from their com company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. So Jesus defines persecution with, with hatred, with exclusion, with insults, with rejection. And then later, as you read, Jesus gives a little more detail on how we should respond to persecution that comes our way. I think one of the greatest lessons he teaches is that we should pray for those who persecute us, pray for those who hate us, pray for those who seek our death because of the light of Christ that is within us. Loving your enemies. There's countless examples of how God has honored this principle in prayer. There's a man I've been told about named Noski. He's an imam used to be an imam in the southern part of the Philippines. I've got some friends in the Philippines. I've got very close friends who have family in the Philippines. This guy, Noski, was a devout Muslim, and he generated respect from this, this tiny village that he lived in. One day he came home from a fishing trip, and he discovered his two daughters had converted to Christianity. He knew the kind of shame that this would bring to his house, to his family, to the community. So in his anger, he beat his daughters horribly, hoping that they would renounce Christ, that they would reject this new faith they had found. But the daughters remained faithful. Okay, They loved their father. They knew that nothing was impossible with God. So they started praying for their father's conversion. Some months went by, and he was fishing again, and he felt this pain in his stomach, this very sharp pain. And as the pain got worse, his, his stomach started to like balloon up, just started swelling. It freaked him out. He was in this horrible, excruciating pain. He prayed, but nothing happened. And then in his desperation, in what he thought was his last moment before he was going to die, he cried out to the God of his daughters, Jesus Christ. And just like that, he was instantly healed. I'm not making this stuff up. Noski emerged from this a new person, a new creation. He submitted his heart, his life, to the Lordship, of Jesus Christ, and today he serves as a pastor. His daughters help him in his ministry. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. We need to confirm in our hearts, in our minds today, that we're going to respond with the persecution.